I have a Duke dog proof trap. Uh, these traps have been out uh, several years. They're a spin off of some other uh, manufacturer's brand, a little Grizz. Uh, they're inexpensive. They've become very popular the past uh, several years. I've adapted them on my line. I've been using different types of dog proof traps uh, for the last 10 years or more, and I found them to be super uh, successful. And, and the reason is you can get so many of them out in a day's time. Uh, the trap I'm holding, this particular one, I've, I've spray painted white. And I want to talk about that. People say that a white trap um, will add more attraction uh, versus an unpainted trap or just a regular dyed trap whether you're using Formula One or some other commercial base dip or logwood dye. Uh, what I've found is when I've painted them white, I've noticed that my possum catch or my non-target catch goes up. And, and I tried that and I pulled one of these traps out of, of my collection that I had painted. And, and I just didn't take the time to spray paint it um, by black today for the purpose of the video. Um, but, you know, I've been hearing about it and I've tried it and I've noticed my non-target uh, catches go way up. So I'll leave that choice yours, whether, whether you feel you have more success with white or brown or any color. Uh, in my personal experience, I'd prefer, you know, a black or a brown uh, type trap. And, you know, the way I have it set up is I have this one on a cable stake. I mean, we're going to dry lane coon. And it's a real quick setup. I'm using a bullet stake with 332nd cable and with a stock chain. And of course, I have a trap tag attached, which is a requirement in my state, uh, Virginia, where this is being filmed. And I hear a lot of people talk about bait. And with bait, you really want something in the trap that when the coon reaches in, this trap has a pull trigger. And you know, with that, you want something impaled on the trigger or you want uh, a bait in the bottom of it that when they grab a hold of and pull, it's not going to come right out. And I know it's popular when people uh, get into the sport of trapping. I hear people say marshmallows are the greatest, marshmallows are the best. And my experience with using marshmallows is once they get in there and you get any type of moisture in the air or it rains, they become soggy and the coon will come up and work that set and when they work it they'll just fish the bait right out with actually without actually firing the trap you know, a coon's paw i mean they have those fingers they use them to feel and grab a hold and hook uh, a couple baits i've used is i've used a fish and if you if you pick a fish you use like a saltwater fish a fish with a really tough skin chop the fish up and take the fish and put one piece in the bottom and also impale another piece with the skin on on the trigger. So that way when the coon works the trap and he's pulling on that, it's just not going to pull right off of the trigger. Uh, the trap I have in my hand and, and another great bait, it's easy, it's super cheap, is go to the grocery store and buy and the cheapest hot dogs you can find. You know, the, the tougher they are and the cheaper the brand, the better. It doesn't matter if they're pork or, you know, whatever, chicken or whatever they're made out of. And I take those hot dogs and I cut them up into one-inch chunks. And then I marinate them in some type of fish oil. And you can be creative with that. I've used shellfish. I've used menhaden. I've used uh, salmon oil and, uh, you know, crayfish oil. I mean, I've used all different kinds of bait. And a lot of times on my line, I'll vary through those. And... You know, when I set up the first couple days, I may be using shellfish, and then I may change over to, um, you know, to a straight, you know, menhaden fish oil. But you can be as creative and find out what works best for you in your area. Uh, the hot dogs that I have here, I've taken those, chopped them up into one-inch chunks, and I've put them in shellfish oil and menhaden, and I've let them soak overnight the day before I come out on the line. And they'll last for quite a long time, weeks out on the trap line, and if they dry out or get a little tough, all the better. They'll, they'll stay on the trigger. And it's important when you bait the dog proof and push one of the chunks, a smaller chunk, completely into the bottom of the trap. And then I've taken another one and I'll walk up to the camera. If you look in the bottom, I have one that is impaled on the trigger. And 
all I'm going to do is you can set the trap um, before you put it in um, or your choice but a lot of times I knock it around a little bit it may fire but yeah, but we're going to go ahead and set the trap while I have it and I see people struggle when people grab these they want to grab them and try to set them like this and and I see different ways and, and I know people use screwdrivers and, and different setting tools but a lot of it is technique I, I set a lot of dog proofs I set uh, hundreds of them through the year and uh, I guess I've built some strength up in my hands too but if you grab the trap and you see how I'm holding that um, you can lock your thumbs around it and I have my fingers on top and here's the dog um, to the trap I want to make sure that's it all I'm going to do is compress the spring and then once I compress it I'm going to use the dog to push the spring down the rest of the way and then I'm going to engage the dog uh, on the trigger and I know people say well you can work the triggers and file them I don't do anything to my dog proof traps you can adjust them a little bit on the end if you feel necessary so it takes less pull to fire it uh, I usually leave mine fully engaged uh, this particular type style has has a spike and I see a lot of people come up and they just push that trap into the ground uh, especially near the water's edge this is going to cause you some problems and I see people do this a lot also the first thing uh, that coon's going to do is he's going to come up to it and in my experience especially if it's straight up and they're they're going to rock it around a little bit and once that trap gets pulled out of the bed and lays flat onto the ground uh, it's really difficult for a coon to get in there and work it and pull it a lot of times you'll come up and you'll see a fired trap um, if you see this and you're bedding your traps like this and you see a lot of them rolled off and a coon, if you're close to the water, they'll even roll it out in the water. And once it gets out into the water, uh, you're done. So I've come up with a quick system to bed these traps. And I don't worry about any gloves or any kind of scent control. All I'm going to do is just come up and, and I'm going to dig a trench. And I'm going to keep this soil is real sandy. And so I'm going to keep some of that. And we're going to go ahead and pound this in. And I'll twist it. And I'll always pull to make sure they're set. So the trap's set, it's baited, it's ready to go. I'm going to push it in. And I usually start with the trap twisted to my left. I'm going to push it in and I'm going to give it a quick twist to engage that trap and make sure it's solid. Here's the important part is, is I'm going to cradle that trap and I'm going to bed it just like you would a steel trap. What you want to be super, super careful of is you cannot impale the top of the trap. Here's your spring. Here's your dog. You want to make absolutely for sure uh, this is not going to freeze up and cause you any problems. So by bedding that on top, I have it solid. I've packed some dirt around it. And when that coon comes in, this is more to his level. When he's out here and he's working the set. And I did set this on a major coon trail coming up the bank. Uh, you know, we have a lot of coon. And even to my left, uh, they're coming up and working this area. A lot of times I'll set a lot of them closer to the water. I didn't do this. It was just an easier film location here. But still a great spot. Uh, this trap is bedded. It's solid. When that coon comes up and he's working the area and he sees that, he can see what's in the bottom of it. So you have some eye attraction there for that coon. And that's very important that he sees something he's interested in. You've soaked the hot dogs in fish oil or whatever kind of marinade that you choose. Something there that he's going after, whether it be sweet or fishy, something that he wants to work. And it's been great success for me with that type of set. Now, outstanding results for me. And if you feel the need and you want to add some trailing, and that's important in a lot of areas where you're closer to the water and you have some super high locations on the bank, I mean, you can make up a trailing scent and trail the animal to the trap, but I never, ever, ever 
put anything outside of the trap. I don't want that coon to get a taste of it. And people make that mistake. You know, I see a lot of the pellets very popular on today's market. And I see people sprinkling marshmallows around and stuff for that coon to eat. You have to be really super careful with that because if you're, if you're marinating and all of these different lure ingredients that are in a lot of these pellets and all this stuff that's out there, it may be foul tasting to that coon. And if he gets a taste of it out of here, you've trailed him in and he doesn't like it, he's gone. You've missed that coon. All of your scent, all of your lure, everything needs to be into that in the bottom of that dog proof. That way when he works at one time and reaches in and pulls, he never gets a taste, he gets caught. So keep that in mind, that is a great tip I have used, uh, all the scent. But if you want to put a liquid trailing scent out, um, you know, do that, that's fine. But stay away from a lot of pre-baiting in the area where you're just feeding the animal. You want them to work the trap, not the area around the trap. Thank you.